Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar from for the UK we have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as we are seeing more unsettled conditions moving in as you can see on the live radar at the moment heavy rain is starting to push in from the west it will ease as it heads eastwards as the weather front does weaken but most over the next 24 hours we'll see at least a few hours of some light to moderate rain with some seeing more than that and some heavier pulses especially through the early hours of wednesday now we are going to see more rain as we head for the latter part of this week might not be quite as widespread as what we're seeing at the moment but still in places it will be fairly miserable temperatures will be below average as well and this looks by far the worst conditions that we've had for a number of weeks uh, for, the, for the next few days really Next week, it does look like it will improve in terms of the temperatures, returning back towards average, as we'll see from the GFS, GM, Eastern WF and the ensembles. We are starting to see some consistency that, yes, warmer air masses may be pushing back in, but it still will remain uh, unsettled. And some of the runs are converging on the idea of a bit of a cutoff low, which is kind of a general term for low pressure that is very slow moving, sitting over the top of us to our south, um, cut off from the main jet stream flow which this time of the year is just to the north of scotland at the moment actually it is through the uk uh, because it's southerly tracks but generally to the north of scotland cut off low would be cut off further southward and that's what the models are showing the outcome is going to be probably above average temperatures would draft and push up some warm air from the south but equally it will allow lots of areas of slow moving rain thundery rain and maybe even some pretty intense thunderstorms developing in places so have a look at that in the second half of the video so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description now if you start on the live radar calling this around 10 p.m through tuesday evening and you can see heavy rain is pushing in from the west light to moderate for most but there are some lighter yellows and even a bit of orange developing which which is the really quite heavy stuff, but as we'll see from the UKV in a minute, as this spreads through overnight, it will reduce in intensity. So for eastern portions of England, for example, it'll only be light to moderate rain patchy through the morning and dissipating away through the afternoon. Tomorrow, as I said, rain dissipating, but we will still have plenty of clouds. It probably won't be all too great for many areas. Now, do put on the temperatures this evening. You can see the temperatures aren't too bad. They aren't great. It definitely does feel fresh out there. It doesn't feel like we're in July. It feels like we're in May, where there's warmth, but nothing particularly warm. Um, so, yeah, not great conditions. But whenever we see the sunshine over the next few days, it still will feel warm because we are at peak uh, sun strength so if we do have a look at the latest ukv now you can see that that rain is heading in overnight and it will continue to press eastwards as we head through wednesday and you see the heaviest stuff most persistent stuff does clear through into the early hours of wednesday and there may be a few heavy poles remaining around the 5 or 6 a.m point but you can see it does fizzle away quite quickly through the morning just leaving Thicker cloud and a few drips and drabs of drizzly and light rain. As we head through Wednesday evening, uh, through, well, yeah, into the latter afternoon, into the evening, we still have thicker cloud in the east, a little bit of rain, but should hopefully clear, and we might be able to see a bit of sunshine around 7, 8 p.m. for a few showers packing in for parts of western Scotland there. As we head into Thursday, showers initially through the morning, uh, maybe some more persistent rain for Scotland around lunchtime, and then we do start to head into the evening, and it doesn't look too bad, so Thursday might be a decent day wind still coming in from the west to northwest so it probably won't feel feel all too warm but temperatures could get into the 20 uh, again to get to around the 20 degree range which we'll have a look at in a minute on those two meter temperatures as we into friday the south it looks like it could be pretty poor we did see yesterday there was this small low that was developing now today it's less organized but it's much slower moving with a waving weather front this essentially means some stationary rain through much of Friday, initially looking fairly light, but could really pep up during the afternoon, maybe coming a bit thundery as it clears eastwards into the early hours of Saturday. And then Saturday's another day of blustery showers, but still plenty of sunshine. And the same could be said for Sunday. So you can see it is very up and down over the next five days. Plenty of horrible conditions around, but equally 
bits and bobs of something drier uh, and temperatures feeling decent in that strong sunshine but with the west and northwesterly wind do not expect anything great do not expect much above 20 degrees uh, and that is at the best of times now if you look at those max temperatures you see as we head into tomorrow really struggling in the mid to high teens 17 18 degrees at best and then as we head into thursday you can see once again could see a 21 or 22 at best most still 18 to 20 and that's because we have slightly drier sunnier conditions across parts of england but again with that northwesterly flow it probably will feel a little bit chillier as we head into friday with all that rain in the south again really struggling in the mid to high teens so a good five degrees below average there maybe even more in places and then into Saturday, again, really struggling around that 19, maybe 20 degrees, which doesn't sound too bad. But with the strong wind, it will feel a little bit chillier than that, especially when we have cloud cover. And of course, this time of year, the average temperature for London is about 23 degrees for the average high. Um, so, yeah, it is not ideal. And then finally, into Sunday, again, bluster showers, so it will be up and down. But again, temperature still a couple of degrees below average but fortunately into next week we are likely to see those upper air temperatures returning back towards average so if you have a look at the latest gfs now you can see the northwesterly flow continuing with more lower pressure over the next few days and that's why we're seeing pretty unsettled conditions you can see into early next week we do see some higher pressure building back in now it's the dominant area of high pressure Therefore, we are unlikely to see bone dry conditions, but definitely more positive. And with a southerly flow, warmer air would be wafting in. And then we have to head towards day 10, so kind of the, the middle of the second half of next week. Look what happens. We see that cutoff load developing. Now, if you have a look at the jet stream, you can see the jet stream dive southwards, and this is where it's getting cut off. Um, so in the subsequent days, what we're likely to see is this low pressure system getting cut off to our south as we're towards 384 hours. That's what we see this little dip in the jet stream that they cut off and then another branch of the jet stream heading northwards. Now it's not exactly clear cut here on the 300 HPA winds, but you can see that kink in the flow and that is where that low pressure gets trapped and it gets cut off. And you can see that on the 500, 500 HPA GA potential heights. Again, that little low pressure system surrounded by slightly higher pressure and what it will mean is there's going to be lots of heavy showers you can see the spiraling showers through much of the uk we are likely to see high levels of cape again nothing too insane as the air masses aren't insanely hot but definitely some enhanced cape there into the longer term and again it gives a pretty decent chance that we could see again heavy showers thundery activity the unfortunate thing is the upper air temperatures would be wafting up above average. You can see out to the east, we are drawing up a southerly to southeasterly wind. So some pretty warm air would be moving in. And look at that, temperatures in the mid to high 20s. So we kind of have to weigh it off. We do get much warmer conditions. We get above average temperatures, but we also get the heavy rain and thunderstorms at times, especially in the south and the west. Now, if you compare to the GM, it actually does have a pretty similar outcome towards day 10 again you can see the northwesterly winds at the moment staying unsettled into early next week high pressure does start to return but not um dominating as i said but then we see that low moving out from the jet stream and this becomes even more cut off than the other runs with the actual air of high pressure branching to the north you can see this here the jet stream to our north is going eastwards and you can see yes it's not 100 percent powerful to uh, through iceland but there is a branch of jet stream that goes through iceland through to scandinavia and then there's this little kink where we see another branch of the jet stream and in that gap um where the, the two sort of branches of the jet stream do move away from each other that's where that low pressure system gets trapped right over the top of the uk and it is likely to again bring lots of heavy showers spiraling around the center of the low and again would likely be pretty heavy pretty thundery and again if we put on cape look at that pretty high levels of cape there for parts of northern europe and the uk we need to keep a very close eye on that indeed could be pretty thundery if that did come off and similar to the gfs temperatures back towards average or above average 30 degrees for parts of europe us only 24 25 
and that's likely due just to the fact that the hottest air is still just to our east and maybe a bit of rain but equally move this 50 miles westwards or 100 miles westwards we could be tapping in to that 30 degree air so again pretty much the same as the gfs and uh, we'll have to wait and see now, if you finish by looking at the latest ecmwf it's actually pretty similar again low pressure dominating over the next few days higher pressure making a return for a time next week before we see that cutoff low starting to develop it's not as clear cut um, as a cutoff low there towards day 10 it kind of transitions so it isn't as stationary but a similar sort of snapshot there for the 10th of july as that low eventually gets reabsorbed into the main jet stream flow back into scandinavia so again not exactly the same but very very similar with plenty of heavy showers and plenty of potentially thunderstorms developing in that sort of scenario and again if we put on the upper air temperatures it again does drag some very warm air in for a time not dominating as much not as persistent because it does transition through a lot faster but equally very warm air out to our east for at least a couple of days there as that low progresses through now do finish by looking at the latest ensemble see this row reflected below average over the next sort of five days or so um, and we do see some higher precipitation at times and then eventually into next week we return back towards average or slightly above average but precipitation remained moderately high again there's not too much confidence in the exact pattern the exact details again a cutoff low would be very showery based convection based so it would have a lot of uncertainty with uh, the rain but uh, again, we can see those signs developing there. The one positive thing, regardless of the precipitation, regardless of the thunderstorms, is those upper air temperatures returning to average. Because with a cutoff low, it will not be raining 24-7. There will be plenty of drier spells, especially further northwards and eastwards. And in those drier spells, we could see very warm conditions with that warm or hot air getting wafted our way. So I think the upper air temperatures are more the important thing to watch at this stage. Precipitation could be all over the place over the next couple of days. We really have to wait in this sort of scenario for those high resolution models to get a hold of it as they're the only ones who will really be able to deal with the small little systems developing, bits of instability, cape, etc., which can change drastically at 48 hours notice. Um, so there's no real point us trying to forecast it seven days in advance. We'll have to wait and see over the next few days. But again, you can see that rough pattern there from the latest ensembles. If you compare to the latest ECMWF ensembles, broadly very similar below average over the next five days or so, returning to our average or slightly above average into early next week. And you can see precipitation is fairly high as well. So it does follow that tune. You can see how the sort of pattern is evolving over the near future. It does look like it will be turning or remaining pretty unsettled, especially in the west over the next few days, and then transitioning further southwards as we head into next week with heavy thundery showers potentially developing with that cutoff low system. We'll have to wait and see exactly how it does develop, but for the time being, yeah, you might have to get your raincoats out. Maybe you have to put away the shorts at least for the next few days, and hopefully things will, will look warmer in that medium term. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.